Hello, and welcome to Thimble and Plume, Doc and Beret Sew Along, Part 3, Constructing the Crown. So you're going to take two of your crown pieces, you're going to place them right sides together. And we're going to start pinning here. Um, it's really, really important that you are uh, very precise with the lining up these points. And this is part of the reason why I prefer to mark my seam lines as opposed to relying on my uh, cut areas and just sewing inside of that. This way I know exactly where my stitching needs to go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna pin through the point, make sure both those points match. And I'm going through and pinning the seam lines together. I'm doing this because this is a curved seam and it's thick fabric. Uh, so I wanna make sure that I am very precise and that those seam lines match up perfectly. So if I do this first, I can assure that that's gonna happen because it will slip if I go start with perpendicular first. So it does take a little bit of longer time, but in the end, it ends up being much more accurate. Uh, then I go in, once I've got them along the seam lines, I just go in and start pinning them in perpendicularly to those pins I've already done. And so now I know that my seam lines are lined up for sure. Uh, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start stitching from that point and go all the way down to the end. Uh, so I'll go in to the point, come out, I'll do a lock stitch next to make sure that it locks it in place so it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and then I will start stitching using a running back stitch. So a running back stitch is where I do a back stitch followed by about three running stitches. Uh, the As far as the uh, width of the stitch goes, that's gonna be determined by your fabric and the size of your needle and uh, whether or not it's under tension. Um, this isn't gonna be under a lot of tension, so I don't have to worry about doing a back stitch the entire way down. So I can speed things up by doing a running back stitch. Uh, you know, I think three back stitches, or excuse me, three running stitches and a back stitch uh, works out well for me. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go all, run all the way down uh, this seam. And as you notice, I'm going through, I will check periodically to make sure that my um, uh, stitching is falling exactly on the seam line on the other side too. I'm gonna stitch all the way to the very end and then I'm gonna tie off at, in order to secure the thread. And you can see, here it is, all stitch open. I've got two of them sewn together. So the next step we're gonna talk about is doing this by machine. It's perfectly reasonable to do this by machine if you prefer. Again, I've already got these items pinned together. I did the exact same method I did in, uh, previously. I'm going to start at the point. I'm going to put my needle in exactly where that point is. I'm gonna take a few stitches and then I'm going to do a back stitch to lock it in place. Again, going right back to where that point starts. Then I can just go along all the way to the very end of my seam, uh, excuse me, all the way to the very end of the fabric, and that's that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put another piece on. So I'm gonna start out again by pinning on another piece. I'm gonna go with right sides together of the next piece. I'm gonna pin that to the two pieces that we just put together. So I'm going from the point of the new piece right into the point of the previous two pieces. I'm going right next to the stitching that I just finished. You wanna be really accurate with this to be sure that at the end, you're, you know, that your seam lines line up and you create a really beautiful uh, joining place. Because we're joining four pieces of fabric here. Uh, so it, it, it can go very wrong. But if you just pay attention to that point and are very precise in this, it comes out beautifully. So we're pinned into place and I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my thread. I am gonna go and start right at the point. Again, going in, where my pin is and I'm going right next to where that stitching from my previous seam ended. I'm going in starting with a lock stitch then I'm going to do my running back stitch all the way down along this seam line until the edge of the fabric. Now once that's done you're pretty much going to put the last piece in exactly the same way 
and you'll have that seam and then the final seam left and uh, you're going to do those in exactly the same way that you've done this. Now I suppose you could just use a running stitch here uh, but or you could use a back stitch but the back stitch is going to be more secure in the end. And here, go to the very end and tie off. I'll, I usually do a couple of lock stitches at the very end to make sure it's good and secure. And then I'll uh, do a, a, a quick knot um, just to secure it. All right, so again, you can continue working through with the, by doing this by machine. Um, so what we have here, it's pinned together. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that all of my seam allowances are going away from the direction that I'm going to be sewing in. I'm gonna place my fabric underneath uh, the presser foot, and then I'm going to make sure that that needle goes in exactly like right next to where all the other stitches, uh, stitch lines have ended. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching and uh, go ahead and do, I didn't do a back stitch here. Um, I had to go back in and do a back stitch. So make sure you back stitch, otherwise your stitches might come out and then you have to redo it. So make sure you back stitch and then you're gonna stitch all the way down to the edge of the fabric. And um, when you get to the end, do another back stitch and that's that. And there we have it. So now we have our crown is assembled and ready to go. You can see that using these methods, we've got a real nice join, a nice X happening right there in the center of the crown. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press our crown. Uh, one thing I always have been told is you gotta press for success. What I like to do first, uh, no, so this is a curved piece. So you see I'm, I'm using a ham to help me press these curves. The last thing you want to do is you've spent all this time being precise. You don't want to mash it, mash your seam. So get a ham, get a rolled up towel, whatever works to kind of uh, get that um, in there. And what I'm doing now is I'm pressing those seams open. Uh, this way you have a nice flat seam when you're done. When I press, I'm not moving the iron back and forth over the fabric. I am literally pressing it down and steaming it. And every now and then in order to lock in that steam, you can see I have a little piece of wood that I come in and I press um, the fabric down. And this, what this does is it keeps the steam locked in there and it makes my seam really flat. Um, I turn it over and I'm gonna, again, just make sure that all those seams are pressed open, really flat and really pretty. Pressing is integral to making a beautiful product at the end. So I'm just going in and making sure that everything is just pressed very nicely. All right, so once we've got the seams pressed open, eventually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching our seam allowances down. So now we're, we're gonna set up for that. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna press all our seams so that they're all going in the same direction and it's going to form a sort of pinwheel shape. I'm starting at that top seam there, I'm going in, I press it with um, some steam, use my um, clapper to keep that steam and press it really flat. I go to the next one, make sure it's going in the same direction, press that down and uh, give it a press with my clapper. Then I move to the next one, press it down, fuss with those seam allowances, and then you can see at the end here, I've got a really cute little pinwheel happening right in the center there, and that's what we've been aiming for. Um, and you see how nicely everything lays. You've got your seam allowances going in different places so that they don't occupy the same space, which means that you have less bulk. So now that we're done pressing that open, we're gonna go ahead and trim the seam allowances and stitch everything in place. So what I've done is I've gone through, you can see where I've marked um, my seam allowance. Um, I wanted to get that down to about a quarter of an inch, um, you know, a scant quarter of an inch, so that when I'm going down over my 
uh, curves, I'm not getting a lot of ripples. I've then pinned it down uh, along the seam in the direction that I'm going to be sewing it in. Now here's what I'm doing. I'm clipping this uh, the seam allowance right here where the uh, fold for the hem is going to go. And the reason is, is that if I fold it up now, I can press the seam allowance of the hem in the opposite direction. Again, here I, what I'm doing is I'm eliminating bulk from being all in one place. Again, that just makes for a, a nicer product in the end. So now that that's done, what I'm doing, I'm gonna be bring, so I'm gonna start in the back, I'm gonna bring my needle in to the front uh, of, of the, um, the piece. And what I'm doing here is called a pick stitch uh, because this stitch is going to show. Uh, there's a few methods you could use to stitch this down. You could uh, use an invisible whip stitch from the back. You could use a running stitch if that's what you're comfortable with. But I wanted these um, to show and I um, wanted them to be um, pretty. So one of the things that I found is that when I'm using a pick stitch, I have a lot more control over where my, uh, my little picks happen because uh, I can see where I'm at, I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so it, it, it just makes it, I can make a much prettier stitch doing it this way. Uh, so what, what I'm doing is I go back behind the previous stitch that I just did, um, like maybe like a hair's breadth behind it. So it's very much like a running stitch, excuse me, a back stitch. Uh, but I go in, take the stitch, and then my um, longer stitch floats behind um, on the back side of the fabric. So I've started at the hem and I'm uh, stitching it down so that until it goes all the way up um, towards the point. Once I get to the point, I'll bring the needle back to the back side and then I will secure it and tie it off. Then um, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that with all the other seams. And that's what this looks like. When I get to the last seam, um, I'm, this is the last stitch I'm taking. I'm going to bring my needle to the back. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around and we're gonna stitch our little pinwheel down just to make sure that everything lays nice and flat. Um, as I'm doing this, this is something I don't want my stitches to show on the, on the wrong side. So I'm just taking a real small bite um, into the ground fabric or into the seams. Uh, I just don't want it to show on the right side of the fabric when I'm done. Just going around the whole thing and stitching it down and securing it in place. You can see it just looks really nice and secure. All right, so next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna basically repeat everything we just did with the lining. You have a choice here though. You can choose not to stitch down the seam allowances if you don't want to. I, um, I didn't, but I do see that I did kind of mess up here. You really should uh, make sure that your seam allowances are pressed to one side at the very least all the way through. Um, so then what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna fold up the hem at the fold line and I'm going to press that down, going along the entire um, bottom of the lining. Um, and then that, that's it. So now your crown and your uh, lining are ready for the next step. And in the next video, we'll be talking about how to construct the crown. Thank you for very much for sewing along with us. If you want this pattern, you can find it at our Etsy shop. If you like this sew along and would like to see more like it, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also visit us at our Instagram or email us.